Welcome back to Uncut with KGH. I am a celebrity and editorial makeup artist, Kendi Jane Hughes, and I am gonna do this look on video for you right now. The Uncut with KGH series is all about uncut videos, so you get to see the good, the bad, and everything in between. Essentially, any mistakes that I might make that might help you do your makeup better. Anyway, we're gonna just get stuck right in. Checking my white balance and my focus and all of that is good. Got nothing on my skin. I am going to start with brows. I love to start with brows with makeup because I think it's really important to get the brow makeup on without any skincare or foundation in the mix. And I'm literally just gonna use a skinny pencil to do this. Um, this is Maybelline's Deep Brown Express Brow. And I'm literally just gonna follow my natural brow line and not make them bigger. I did overpluck as a teenager and so I suffer from sparse brows now but it's actually okay because i get to do things like this without having to block my brows completely so um just literally messing with the shape that i already have i'm not really gonna change it too much i am probably gonna thin it out with brow gel in a moment but i just want to get the sort of shape where i want it i want it to be just consistently sort of pencil thin and i'm just sort of using very very light pressure to get the brow makeup on. And I'm, I'm gonna do my shape of brow because it's my face and I think we should all sort of honor what we like and what we sort of desire in makeup versus changing something completely that suits somebody else's face that might not suit your face. And so I think it's really important to like, you know, take inspiration from things, but you don't actually have to copy it completely, completely, completely. Um, and I'm just using the mirror behind me to see what I'm doing and just filling in where the sparseness is most but I'm not making them bigger that's the point of this sort of 90s overplucked brow so we're kind of halfway there to be honest with the brows like you just sort of obviously if you do have you know full brows I wouldn't say go pluck all your eyebrows off to create this look once or twice I would say you can do a brow blocking technique. I would honestly Google it. It'll be easier than me telling you what to do. Um, it's an amazing technique that's sort of been around for a very, very long time. Drag queens are experts because often in drag makeup, the brows are completely repositioned on the face. And to do that, you want to block them. And it's concealing and it's powdering and it's sometimes glue, like a literally sometimes like a, like a glue stick. Um, and there's color correction involved, it's a process, but it's amazing what you can do when the brows are different. So if you didn't know about brow blocking, now you do. All right, so I'm kind of happy with that shape. I am gonna just take my Nabla brow gel and I'm just gonna brush through them and then just groom the top line of them down so that they're sort of, you know, um, flat and in place. But one thing I am actually going to do is go back in just here because I want a little bit more contrast because I can feel like when it feels more see-through in areas than others, I don't love it. I want to just build a little there. So there we are. I'm happy with that. That's good. I am now going to do just a little bit of skincare because I'm going to do a full coverage foundation. I typically only do skincare if I'm going to use full, 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 full coverage foundation. If I am going out and about during the day and I need to be protected from the sun, I will use SPF as my skincare. If um, I'm doing like a sheer coverage product, I pretty much will use like the gloss and the gleam from that sheer coverage product. Let's give you Glossier Stretch as an example. Um, I'm using this face cream, by the way. It's not focusing. You are annoying. Let me figure this out. Um... This is Beauty Stat um, Balm. And yes, I'm shooting on an iPhone. So basically the, the white balance or the, everything's a little bit automatic. Let me just get my focus back where I want it to be for me. There we are, nice. Okay, Beauty Stat Sear, uh, like a gel cream. And then putting that on. So yeah, but basically what I was saying is I typically don't love loads of skincare underneath foundations but that totally depends on what I'm going to do for foundation. If I'm going to do like a really matte foundation, I would do skincare. If I'm not going to do a matte foundation, I wouldn't do that much skincare. I would let the gloss of the foundation kind of be the shine that I want. I'm going to do um, Beautiful Skin from the Tilbury. Uh, and I'm going to use it with this little brush that says Sculpt number four. And I'm just going to start to pop that on from the T-zone out. And... 
keep getting headaches this week. I think it's exhaustion. I've been like up at 4 a.m. yesterday and up at sort of 5 a.m. Day, two days before that. It's just fashion week for you all over the place. So just applying this just to get that coverage where I want it to be. I always like to put my concealers and foundations in the T-zone first and spread them around. Unless I'm doing sort of just a few spots of concealer just around the face to sort of even out the skin tone. Pam Anderson's makeup, I think for me, is an iconic moment of the 90s. I think like as a kid growing up watching things like Baywatch and like her makeup and just the way that she would style herself, I feel like was always fabulous. And I think that, I don't know, she's just an icon of the generation. And the fact that she has this awesome documentary that I'm actually yet to watch, but people really liked it, so I'm gonna watch it. And how much her son just like adores his mom. My friend and I, my friend Sammy and I were talking about that and it was just so sweet. There's nothing cuter than a guy that adores his mom, as he should. Um, all right. So stopping there because I might, my focus. Stopping there because I might mess with this a little bit more in a while, but I'm just gonna keep that on my hand for now because it's not bothering me. The next step I'm gonna do is a little bit of contour. I'm gonna use the Fair One shade of Janessa Myricks's um, contour palette, contour cream. I love this. I didn't, I did like it when I first got it, but I didn't love it as much as I do now. And I think I just didn't give the fairness of it a chance. Sometimes you just sort of have to give things a, a couple of goes before you sort of really fall in love with it. Cause it is actually quite light for me. Perfect product for somebody who's very, very, very fair. What I love about it is if I use just the right amount, it gives me that perfect contour. If I use too much, it looks gray. If you, if you are uncut with KGH, bonus, bonus real element just happened. I really thought it was gonna fall on the floor, hence why I went like that. It, so, you know, there's a fine line between too warm and too cool. And I think that sometimes that's ratio as well. Um, but I like to just do a little here, like on my top lip, it's already looking a little gray. So I'm just going to shear it down right there. That's because it's on the pink of my natural lip though. And then I'm just going to go on the tip of my nose and just do a little shadow. Light brings forward, dark takes back. Always remember that, like shadows. If you're trying to create shadows, there should be a darker color, typically. If you're trying to create light, it should be a lighter color. It's pretty simple. All right. Great. I know I'm going to love this makeup because I love this kind of look on me. And I, I don't know, maybe it just sort of makes me feel back to my sort of late, early teens when I would sort of, you know, wear this kind of makeup myself. All right. And do a little bit of blush after using that contour cream. This is um, the blush that she's wearing in that photo. This is Pink Mushroom from, um, what do you call it? Half Magic. The blush that she's wearing in this is quite subtle, so I'm not gonna go too hard with blush. And just sort of press it on just in the high points and then we're gonna go we're gonna go for it with eyeliner this is the neen side eyeliner pencil neen is from a makeup artist called janine labelle who founded Stila cosmetics years and years and years ago i'm gonna go inside the waterline and just go like in there first neen is a really really cool brand i've tried a few things from them but um i definitely kept this because i love how creamy it is let me just look at the reference picture again really quick. Okay, so the pencil is all the way inside the waterline and I'm just gonna sort of close my eye on it and just get it in there. A little bit of there too. Pam is wearing lashes in this photo. I'm not gonna do lashes because I actually don't have a lash shape that's that shape. And I also feel like you don't need the lash if you don't want to. So I'm just gonna keep the, la the liner thick at this outer edge. This is creamier than what I thought. So I'm just gonna pull some of it off with my finger. But that's kind of the eye. And there's like not really much else to it, except for the powder that I'm gonna put on in a second. So I'm just gonna do little sort of specks of pigment and just leave it alone. Oh my God, I feel like I'm the 90s version of myself already. I was born in 83, so in the 90s I was like a teenager. Wait, was I? Hang on a minute, oh my God. Am I showing my terrible math ability? 83. To 90, it would have been seven. No, I wouldn't have been a teenager. I would have been like, oh my God. The comments are gonna be so funny on this video. You're all gonna be like, no, in the 90s, you were between this age and this age. Listen, I've never excelled at maths. I'm not gonna to try today. Especially when it's about makeup and not numbers. Okay, 
So here we are. Let me just check both sides. I need more in that inner corner. I literally love this already. I feel like I feel like a teenage dirtbag in the best way. All right, I'm going to go for this Mario Etherealized palette, and I'm going to take this color. The color she's wearing is like a straight silvery gray, but I kind of want to modernize it a little. Um, and I'm just going to take, honestly, this brush that I applied it with, that I smudged the black with. I'm just going to buff the excess of that black pigment into a cloth. And then I'm going to take this color, which is just like this sort of slate gray, and just pop this right over the top. And just sort of give it a little bit of something to stick to in a way the black uh shadow the black pencil is creating like a sticky base for this um powder but also my non sort of primed non-powdered eyelids is also providing a sticky base my friend isabel's gonna love this look she's like i love it when you do cool sort of smoky tones on your eyes it does look good on light eyes to sort of go sort of slate and silvery and sort of intense um, but I also think warm tones look equally amazing. Brown eyes and every sort of color in between light and dark eyes, I think. I don't believe in rolls with makeup, to be fair. But I do think that brown eyes kind of suit every color. I think brown eyes look amazing in jewel tones, like pinks, berries, plums. Like doing Ash Grimes makeup is so fun to play with color. Um, because she really loves that kind of look. I'm going to just pop that silver out a little bit with this other one that I pulled from Dior. Um, it's like a back, one of the backstage palettes. It's a really handy versatile one because it's got black, a brown, a silver, a white, a cream. I'm just going to go into there a little bit with the silver with the tip of that brush. And just sort of do a little extra pop of contrast. And then, I feel like there's something inside my top like crawling on my skin. You know in New York City there's commonly bugs everywhere. So, you know, you never know. <laughs> um, all right. With this brush again, I'm going to take the pencil, wherever it went, here it is, the Neen pencil, I'm just going to pick up, can you see, is my focus good? I think it's fine. I'm going to take the brush from the pencil and I'm just going to go back in and make it a little darker in certain areas. The reason why I'm not going in with the brush, with the pencil, direct, is because this gives me more control. And I'm just doing it in the outer edges. And I've not got fallout or anything like that, it's just perfectly fine where it is, the makeup like not falling and we're just going to sort of intensify so I'm going to a dinner tonight in the city for Glossier's opening of this new store on Spring and Crosby it's very exciting I've been a brand friend of Glossier for a very long time I work on a lot of their shoots and help with a lot of product development that's something that people might not know about me in my career. I do a lot of things that are not necessarily what you might think. Like I do product development with brands. I do other people's makeup. I say that jokingly because I think a lot of people know that I do other people's makeup. But every now and again, somebody will be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that you did. Like, you know, clients. All right, I'm going to do my mascara before I do. I need more liner. There definitely needs to be more liner on this eye. I'm going to go hard up there. Um, you know, I post mostly myself on social because most of what I post is educational or inspiration, you know, to, to provide inspiration for people wanting to try something new with makeup. And, um, yeah, sometimes you don't always get a good photograph of a client that you're working on, depending on the, whatever the circumstances. I'm going to go hard at the outer corner of the eye and really get loads of mascara on. I want to start developing different YouTube content um, ideas outside of Uncut with KGH. Like I want to start doing a few edited formats that maybe are a little different. Um, but for that, I need to find an editor that I can just drop all my content to because that's the point of KGH. Uncut with KGH is that I can just drop it in um, and upload it direct without edits. I actually really like the format. Okay, so really going hard at the outer corner. I actually almost want it to be like clumpy to kind of look dramatic. And yeah, her lashes aren't super super defined in the inner corner, so I'm not going to go there. And she actually doesn't have loads of mascara on the bottom lashes. But do you see how easy that was? That was so quick and easy. I'm going to use a lip liner from Nabla. This is one of my favorites at the moment. This is called Lip Shaper in number one. And she's got like a slightly contoured lip, but... It's like subtle. 
Although there was times where it was not subtle for Pammy. I'm gonna do a little bit of lip oil in Revealed from, this is a bit pinker than what she's wearing, but it's okay. She's wearing more of a beige, but I don't like cool tone lips on me too much. Like, sorry, warms. I like a cool with like a pop of pink in the middle. Okay, so now I'm just gonna shear that down just a little. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with probably this because I've just got so much of it on my hand, I don't wanna waste it, and a small brush. So I'm just gonna take like a little fluffy shadow brush like this and I'm just gonna go in a little closer to the eye now to sort of blend into the shadow. Okay, this actually, I, I anticipated that this look was gonna be two videos, but it actually was quite simple and easy. Let me just bring that onto, into the brow just there. She is quite matte. I'm gonna go for powder and really sort of, the lip isn't right, but we might tweak it a little. And that's the thing with makeup. Just like start with little bits of things and then add to it. Don't like stress if it's not quite where you want it to be just yet. Like just, you know, get there gradually and keep adding things um, versus trying to take stuff away. Just gradually get to where you want to be. And we are looking good. I'm gonna go grab a coffee after this. What's really fun about doing content is sometimes I'll just be like, let's just go grab a quick coffee whilst I've got a full face of makeup on. Um, and one time I actually went to Trader Joe's across from like near where I live. Um, wearing a full face of sequins and like Swarovski crystals because I just spent so long on them that I didn't want to take it off. Um, and the woman behind the counter, the person behind the counter was like, didn't even look up actually for a few minutes. And then when she finally did, she was like, oh, it was funny. I was like, yep, going to a circus. Okay, hands pressing it into the foundation just to further blend because it's quicker sometimes than taking a big brush and I'm going to powder now okay so for powder I'm going to use she's a little glistening in the skin um so I'm going to use a little bit of the Laura Mercia um translucent is it translucent translucent um setting powder, setting powder ultra blur it's got a little bit of sheen in it so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of powder with this brush and then use the cap to swirl the powder into the brush. This is called priming the brush. So I'm getting it into the bristles of the brush and therefore allowing for me to just deposit that matteness without having to blend the powder. Like if I sort of shoved a big wad of powder on my skin without sort of pressing it into the brush first, it would have been hard to maneuver around. Okay, we are gonna just add further contrast with that brush actually, because that brush having a little bit of my powder in it is gonna make this step much more uh, seamless. I'm just going to do a little bit of bronzer. This is um, Nabla Soft Revenge Bronzing Powder. Just a little contrast from my complexion. Let everything pop a little bit. It doesn't have to be super, super neat. Just like blended. Neat meaning your application. Like getting it on. You just slap it on and then blend it on. Blend it in. I do need to find that bottom lip a little bit more. I'm going to use this brush. This is an It Cosmetics brush that I actually have fell in love with this week. I did a partnership with them um, on Instagram around a serum. And it's such a good little handy brush that allows for you to sort of really um, manipulate the textures on your face. Okay. I'm feeling kind of good about this. This is feeling nice. Her lip is a little bit more contrasting than mine. I'm going to get endless cacao, although I actually don't think I have one. Currently, we will see what we have. This is my pot of pencils that I use on a regular. You know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use good old Aphrodite. Just a little. This is Vive. She does have like more of a defined lip line than me. I seriously thought I saw something behind me then and it gave me a slight... <gasps> Okay, it's better. Better. Aphrodite from Vive. Actually, pull that back down so that I can credit it in the bottom. All right, I think I feel kind of good about this. This feels nice. 
I'm gonna pull my hair down. <laughs> that is so oily that I need to wash it and it just stayed where I wanted it to be. But I do feel like a 90s badass right now. The one more little thing that I'm gonna do, just cause for me, it's my comfort level is just darken those. And that my friends is the Pam Anderson Vibe makeup look. I really hope this is in focus most of this video. Um, haven't done one of these for a minute. I'm gonna bank a bunch of content today and just sort of have them queued ready to go every Wednesday and every Sunday. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. I really, really love this eye actually. I think it's something that I will do regularly. Also look at my teeth, they're like almost straight. I need to be brightened though when I have the trays taken away. All right, love you all. I'm gonna stop talking. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. If you haven't, um, please share your thoughts on this video if you uh, would like or if you have any, and um, I'll see you in a bit. Love you guys. Bye.